So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the week 12 of NPTELTA live interaction session for the rapid manufacturing course. The course ID for this course is NOC 22 ME 74 and this is Palkim Gupta, PhD scholar and a PMRF scholar in Department of Material Science and Engineering, IIT Kanpur. The course instructors for this course are Professor J. Ram Kumar and Professor Amandeep Singh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Kanpur. So, this is the last week uh, for this course. Uh, wherein we have uh, majorly seen about uh, the plant simulation part and uh, how that can be done using an actual software. And uh, we have also studied about certain uh, or rather three case studies for rapid manufacturing case. So uh, we'll uh, briefly discuss the contents of this week and uh, then uh, go on to solve some of the sample problems which will further uh, help you in uh, solving your assignments okay uh, so uh, I hope you all uh, will also solve the sample problems along with me as we go through this lecture so uh, starting uh, with a product life cycle uh, management so uh, this is a typical curve uh, wherein the y-axis is showing your uh, revenue and uh, on x-axis, there are the different stages of a product life cycle management. So what is a product life cycle management basically? Let us first understand that. So it is a system of strategic processes. A system of strategic processes that leads you from the planning to the point the product actually retires from the market. So it can be subdivided into four parts. So first this is your planning stage wherein you plan about the product then you go on uh, towards the development stage that is uh, wherein uh, you have uh, designed the product and now you are into actual development of the product and then you have the manufacturing wherein you have a factory scale or a very large scale uh, development of the product when your product is actually at its peak in the market and then this is your post sale support and service till the product retires out of the market. So when you initially start on planning a product, uh, what is uh, first encountered? You have an idea, you work on it, you plan how your product will uh, look like and then you launch it. So, so this is suppose basically your launch. So in that process, you invest some amount of money. So that is basically your loss. Now after your uh, launch, your product starts to earn revenue. So in the development stage, where, uh, wherein only some people know about your product or this has not been widespread in the market, you reach a break even point. So this is your break even point, wherein all the money that you have invested has been recovered. All the money that you have invested is recovered and now uh, then uh, your product eventually starts uh, to have a greater market so this is the peak of your profit okay of your manufacturing zone and now uh, after a certain point when you have further modifications in the product and you have future versions of your product uh, the previous versions or the earlier version starts to retire. So this is where your product has actually retired. Okay, so uh, there is one question from Mr. Shriyansh. Uh, he would like to know uh, how should we revise the complete course? Okay, so uh, 
we'll discuss this towards uh, the end of this brief recap so let us continue with this and then we can discuss about your question okay uh, so uh, when and then your product retires so what our aim is we uh, need to minimize this investment and maximize this revenue generating part so entire this part this we need to maximize so that we have greater profits and revenue and uh, lower losses so we want a curve something like this okay so wherein this has uh, made uh, made us to launch our product even earlier we have reached our break even point earlier we have a peak uh, of uh, sales earlier and have higher profits and lower investments so we can achieve this using certain simulations okay so for this planning part we have nx software then uh, for this development part we have technomatics then for this manufacturing also we have technomatics and for this last part we have team center so all these kind of different softwares help us to simulate uh, what uh, will be the timings uh, that will be required to develop a product how the failures will be how much time will it take uh, to overcome those failures all these uh, situations presumed situations can be simulated using softwares so this nx software is basically used for cad and cae which are uh, computer aided design and computer aided engineering and this is not only limited to he just the design or drawing but also to your simulations and analysis a uh, simulation and analysis as in your stress strain simulations your strength simulations or thermal simulation if a product is working fine as per your expectations or not so is any one of you having any question in this part uh, any any kind of doubt in this particular part okay so uh, let us move to the next part so uh, why do we need to uh, do such simulations we need them so that we can uh, develop a plant layout uh, okay so we so that we can decide on where our uh, machinery would be placed in a factory or in a plant so that uh, the flow time for any product is the minimum some there are minimal movement of the product when it goes from one manufacturing stage to the second manufacturing stage that is why we need to have these simulations so that we can actually plan a layout for our uh, plant or factory so now why do we need to lay uh, lay out a plan, uh, plan so that we can account for any changes in the design so design changes suppose your product is having any kind of design changes so corresponding to those design changes there will be certain manufacturing process changes as well so to accommodate these manufacturing process changes uh, you should have a layout uh, in your factory such that uh, additional machines can be added without any hassle then another is expansion of your enterprise so uh, suppose today you have a company you uh, start uh, any kind of a startup or a business you have uh, an employee of 10 uh, 10 employees in your plan, a company now in future obviously and everyone is going to plan for expansion of their enterprise so corresponding sorry correspondingly you need to uh, change the layout of your factories as well so uh, that possible expansions are also uh, taken into account wh while uh, planning any factory because uh, it is not like once you place a machine or any setup you cannot just uh, change it every day or the other these are really heavy setups and uh, sophisticated setups which cannot be displaced every now and then 
then uh, another is uh, size of the departments so suppose uh, you want to expand your R&D team maybe expansion of R&D or maybe just the expansion of your technical staff okay suppose you have already have three milling machine and now you want to add two more milling machine okay so suppose you plan like today I am going to set up only two milling machines in my uh, factory but in future as in when I start to generate revenue I plan to add five more to scale up the production so that addition should be taken into account uh, while uh, planning your layout or uh, if in case in future you want to add any new plant or any new department so that should also be taken into account say suppose today uh, you start your company without any R&D facility just uh, the ready technology that uh, you have but in future you want to develop your own uh, R&D as well so uh, you have such plans then you can um, just uh, leave some space or plan your uh, factory or plant in such a way that there are certain uh, spaces available say for example you open a hospital now and today you do not have any cardiology center but in future you plan to incorporate one so you just plan the architecture of your hospital in such a way that there is no hassle uh, when you plan to add your cardiology center okay now next is uh, what are the various type of plant layout systems can any one of you uh, mention uh, these plant layout systems or uh, what are those uh, mr vedant or mr shriyansh or study our earth what are the different kind of layout systems that are usually followed okay so the different kind of plant layout systems that are usually followed are first is your process layout okay so yes a uh, functional and product line these are two kind stationary another one okay so process layout or also termed as the functional layout so in this layout uh, you divide your uh, systems in the with respect to their functionality with respect to the process they are performing for example all your turning machines that is lathe they are set up in one room all your uh, drilling machines in one room okay so they are set up individually in individual rooms then this is your process layout okay wherein you can say one kind of a process occurs at uh, in one particular room okay so one single kind of a process occurs in one particular room next one is product layout or flow line layout okay product layout or flow line layout in this uh, in this particular kind of layout uh, your factory or plant is uh, planned or laid in a way that your uh, that the uh, product follows a sequence or follows a line okay so suppose this is your entry point of the product 
and this is your exit point of the product so this product will flow in a particular line and here different operations uh, will be taking place across this line so suppose this is milling drilling then turning and then finishing okay so different kind of processes occur occurs through that line or this can be if it want uh, if the product needs milling again this can be milling again okay so it is not discretized on the basis of the product or uh, so on the basis of the process but uh, this is laid out in such a way that uh, the product uh, goes uh, into the manufacturing parts in a sequential manner okay layout in which the product follows its manufacturing cycle sequence in a sequential manner and third one is your fixed position layout okay so in fixed position layout the positions uh, of uh, your products and processes are fixed and uh, they are made at their own very places now fourth is your combination type so this is a combination of process and product layout okay so it can be either a process within a product layout or a product within a process layout okay that is e either the process layout can be a subset of the product layout or a product layout can be a subset of the process layout okay oh, so this is a bit confusing is it clear or uh, shall i explain it again Uh, is this combination type layout clear or shall i explain it again okay i assume it is clear and the last one is a cellular layout in cellular layout different uh, the entire manufacturing cycle is discretized into small small different different cells so for example in a cycle manufacturing company so you have your rings made in a particular cell spokes made in a particular cell then there is an assembly uh, assembling of the ring and the spokes okay so all processes are discretized into small cells okay so instead of uh, going to manufacture the entire cycle uh, through a product line we have different cells wherein different components are first manufactured and then they are brought out and assembled together for example uh, in an automobile factory there are sorry engines uh, made in a different cell then uh, you have another cell for the fabrication of your steering another cell for the fabrication of your suspension system and even uh, sub cells to manufacture different components of your suspension system and then they are assembled together uh, to finally develop an automobile okay so uh, after studying these uh, plant layouts uh, we had seen uh, a plant simulation using the simons technomatic software so this was uh, one of the pre done examples that was shown 
by Professor Amandeep Singh in the lecture. So herein you see this is the entry point. This is the entry point. Here your cars are entering. Okay. And then they are transferred into these overhang conveyors. Okay. So these cars after entry, they are transformed into these overhang uh, and rotating conveyors. You see, and then there are, these are the workers. And these are their workstations. Okay. Now you see these workers, uh, this car is rotating and these workers are assembling or fixing some component. Some component is being fixed here. Okay. Now this goes on. There are multiple workers across this line. Okay. So you see. There are multiple workers across this line and they are working in a simultaneous fashion. Okay, now after, when these operations are completed, these cars are brought to their original position and taken out, sorry, and then uh, taken out from these overhang conveyors at this point. Here they are taken out from these overhang conveyors and then from here they are made to exit this particular uh, frame or this particular floor of the workshop then they go on to the second room for another kind of work so here uh, in this particular simulation it was shown how the total time can be calculated how uh, it can be calculated in a particular time frame how many products can be developed per day, per hour, or the total number of products, and it uh, can how it can also be calculated, um, like uh, what are the failure percentages, how much time will go uh, in if any part if any uh, operation of this cycle uh, fails. Okay, so all these information can be taken from this particular simulation software. So let us understand the different components of the software briefly. Sorry. Okay. So uh, this uh, is uh, what the software window looks like uh, when you have a fresh uh, model to make. So this is your frame or frame or basically a room or you can say a floor okay wherein one type of operations are done so this is your option for the grid you can turn on and off and each grid point has a distance of one meter both in vertical and the horizontal direction consecutive grid points are arranged at a distance of one meter both in horizontal and vertical direction okay so this helps you to scale uh, how much is uh, how much is the distance being traveled uh, by a component uh, by a product from one process to another process okay so let us revise each of these components so uh, first is our entry and the exit points so this is the drain which is your exit and this is your source which is correspond to your entry okay now uh, can anyone tell me what is the function of this connector? Mr. Vedant or study or earth. What is the function of this connector?
Okay, so this connector is used to connect uh, one process to another process. Okay, it's uh, simply a connector uh, which uh, just uh, allows you to make a flow line that uh, af or create a sequence that after source you will go, go to your uh, single process and after process one you go to your process two like that. Okay, simply a line connector. And then uh, you have uh, this single process. This is important and parallel process. So in single process, this particular icon, you can define one process at a time. You can also define the time it takes to perform uh, that particular process. Okay. And in parallel process, you can define a, num, uh, a particular kind of a process which is happening multiple times parallelly. For example, you are having four milling machines running simultaneously. Okay, so for example, if uh, your uh, second, uh, say this is your source, this is your process 1, this is your process 2, okay, so this is flowing like this. Now suppose your process 2 is a faster process and your process 1 is a slower process. So what happen is uh, this process 2 will have to wait till the process 1. Um, can uh, actually uh, complete its operation. So what you will do is you can apply parallel processing. That is you can apply multiple machines performing the same operation in parallel. Okay. So for example, you are having four milling machines. Now this, uh, this will fasten up as there are four machi sim uh, machines simultaneously doing the work. So now the wait time for this process to will reduce. So for that purpose, this parallel process is used. Now there is this assembly. So for example, you are having two different components, say nuts and bolts being manufactured in two different lines. Now you can just connect them with an assembly wherein both of them will be assembled together before actually going to exit. Then you have dismantle section. So opposite to assembly, you have to dismantle two objects. Then there is a pick and place robot. So this is uh, placed in between two processes. Okay. Placed in between two processes. And it is used to simulate a robot which picks up your component from process one and delivers it to process two. Then there is store. Can you define what is store? Uh, I suppose it is pretty simple. Mr. Vedant, can you define it? Okay. So uh, basically a store is used to uh, uh, dev uh, develop a storage space yes where the parts are contained for assembly right and uh, not just for assembly for storage in uh, between the processes as well say for example your uh, process 2 is slow and process 1 is fast so you can have a store between these so that it uh, stores the products. Uh, till the time process 2 uh, completes itself. Okay. Like that there is sorter. Then there is this line. This is nothing but a conveyor belt. Okay. Then there is angular converter. 
and a converter. So what is the difference between an angular converter and a converter? A converter uh, changes the process line at 90 degrees. But in angular converter, you can define it to be any angle. Okay. So converter, it is particularly 90, sharp 90 degree bend. Okay. Then there is turn table and turn plates. Okay. So these turn tables are, suppose you have this kind of a table and you have process, uh, you need to, to swap the products. Okay. So you have this process 1 and process 2 and this is your turn table. So what it takes is it will take this product from here and this product from here and it will rotate to deliver this product here and uh, this hash product here for this turn table is used and turn plate is nothing but an extended version of turn table wherein you can have more number of components at the same time. So these are some of the major components that are used in simulation software. Okay. Uh, okay. Now next uh, let us see uh, some of the controls. So here uh, they have uh, this process control dialog box. So this is the dialog box for a single process. How you can modify it? So here in C, this is your processing time. You can change it as per your requirement. Like they have different val functions and values. Like you can have constant value. You can have a no uniform distribution, a normal distribution, log normal distribution, etc. And this is the time. This is minutes to seconds. So this particular milling operation, single process will run for one minute. Okay, and you can also uh, set up uh, what are the failure times. Okay, say suppose 5% of the time it fails or uh, if it fails, how much time it takes to uh, repair back. That can also be incorporated within these models. Now, uh, when you uh, model those, you can also generate graphs wherein uh, this is working. Uh, wherein your process works this is setting up where uh, this is the time invested in setting up the process say for example uh, any process requires some heating preheating like in additive manufacturing you require preheating of powder bed so this will come in setting up so what time does it take in setting up for before the actual manufacturing operation then this is waiting Okay, so you have process 1, process 2, okay, this is fast, this is slow, so now this process has to wait for some time, so how much time is uh, going in waiting, then blocked, okay, so uh, blocked as in uh, wherein um, the system is not able to just, uh, what do I say? The system is uh, not able to take up the number of products that are being sent by the assembly line. Okay, so it is blocked. That is, your product is waiting and uh, your uh, the machine is not free. Okay, so your product is waiting, say, to get milled. But your milling machine is not free. So you say the uh, machine is blocked. Then how, may, how much time is going in failure? How much time it is going in stopping, pausing or how much time it works in an unplanned fashion. So here you see there are milling, drilling and grinding operations as was uh, in one of the examples. So you see it uh, almost 95% of the time milling is working and drilling is working and also grinding is working but rest of the time grinding has to wait whereas drilling and milling are blocked probably because these two are slower operations okay and your grinding is a 
faster operation. Is there any doubt in this particular concept? Mr. Vedant, is there any doubt? Or shall we proceed further? proceed further so then uh, there were uh, rapid manufacturing case studies so first was a uh, medical application okay so we saw three case studies one was medical applications one was automobile application and uh, other was for aerospace application so for medical application uh, it was uh, done by uh, this case study is from Pro's lab in Australia, Canterbury, Australia, wherein they ensure absolute accuracy of uh, removable partial dentures. Okay. So uh, they ensure uh, absolute accuracy with additive manufacturing technique for these removable uh, dentures. So you see uh, these uh, teeth. As you know, they are a kind of preform surfaces. Okay. Um, just a minute. Yes. So, uh, for a removable partial dentures. So these teeth are free form surfaces and it is not easy to manufacture them uh, with accuracy. Okay, so initially uh, what was the method? They used to scan and get the 3D uh, data cloud, 3D point data cloud by the means of reverse engineering and 3D scanners that we had studied. Okay, sorry, it is 3D scanners and reverse engineering, sorry, 3D scanners and reverse engineering. Now after they have these uh, data cloud that means they have this CAD file, they used to print resin. Okay, now that resin was used to develop uh, these lost wax patterns. Okay, this was then used to develop these lost wax patterns. And then those uh, mo and, uh, molds were developed out of those. Now these molds were filled with cobalt chrome material and these dentures were developed. Now because of uh, this wax and all these things involved, there were a lot of errors and the products that were developed were not accurate and they needed to go uh, through uh, to these again a finishing and post processing operations. Now with the help of metal additive manufacturing, these dentures can be uh, fabricated directly with this CAD data. So we can have maybe a powder based process or an EBM process wherein we can have cobalt chrome powder and uh, then we can directly additively manufacture these dentures. So you see this is uh, one of the uh, 3D printed dentures wherein this is your actual material and these long columnar bars they are your support material. So this uh, provided a very viable solution to this medical industry. Okay. So with this they could uh, make these dentures with very high accuracy and almost 0% uh, errors. Okay. And uh, their remakes were also uh, drastically reduced or almost dropped uh, to zero. In case of lost wax casting they had to undergo remakes like 
first product failed so they had to remake it second also failed they had to remake it third also failed they had to undergo this remake and process again and again but with this additive manufacturing they didn't have to undergo this uh, remake process another was this automobile application uh, so metal cd printing that pushed the boundaries in uh, motor 2 to define innovation so this was used in bike racing wherein uh, they intended to uh, isolate the suspension from the steering forces so you guys might have studied that steering uh, forces uh, highly affect the suspension which further affect the performance so in order to win a bike race kind of a competition it is necessary uh, that they isolate these so initially and uh, this uh, the wishbone this is the wishbone of the suspension front suspension okay so it was uh, initially made in 12 parts so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and other parts on the other side and they were welded together and uh, you all know that these bike racing competitions and moto uh, kind of competitions in these these bike go on at a very high speed and if if at all there is a small jerk even these welds can open these welds can open and disrupt the structure okay so additive manufacturing paved the way to develop these into a single integral component so with the help of additive manufacturing it was possible to isolate the suspension by making it uh, as a single unit from the steering forces so here is the simulation uh, and the cad model it could uh, be simulated what can be the potential errors during the cad modeling and uh, what design could sustain uh, the better strength and this had eventually had better strength and stiffness than the original one or the previous one and this is the actual 3d printed wishbone also they could uh, achieve a significant reduction in mass uh, by using titanium in case of 3d printing now another application was for aerospace uh, okay so uh, the company uh, that need it needed to replace small pipes which formed the part of the cabin windows and stop the uh, windows from misting up missing up like uh, when in winters you go out uh, you see some kind of fog over the glassy surfaces so th this is basically called a breather pipe so it was initially developed using injection molding and that machine failed okay uh, so it had some uh, failure so this product could not be manufactured and it would take a lot of time which uh, the company couldn't afford so they went on to one of the uh, additive manufacturing companies and requested them for a possible solution so uh, the particular uh, additive manufacturing company developed uh, these uh, breather pipes for them and also and this could reduce the time of production from 6 months to just 4 weeks and also initially uh, this geometry had a smaller diameter and sharper bend okay so uh, because of this smaller diameter dust particles could uh, just get stuck in and disrupt the way uh, so that was a problem and this sharper bend could uh, act as a stress concentrator as well and it was uh, it was not a good idea so with cad designing they uh, and additive manufacturing they increased the diameter and smoothened this bend as it can be seen in this figure to develop uh, better breather pipes for the aerospace application so these breather pipes are very small like this much uh, small components 
okay so this was for this week's content the case studies and the plan simulation part so any doubt uh, in these lectures mr shriyansh or uh, mr vedant any doubt any one of you okay so uh, coming to the question of uh, mr shriyansh uh, how to revise the complete course i understand that this is a uh, like very extensive course but if you go in a sequential manner and understand each important concepts so try to understand the concepts uh, and relate them with the actual life, uh, real life problems and industries so start with a uh, basics and concepts of everything so you can have basics of rapid manufacturing then go to rapid tooling rapid prototyping and understand the physical principles and working principles of each of the additive manufacturing techniques uh, very clearly and try to relate everything uh, with the real life situations you see how complex uh, every manufacturing cycle can be and how additive manufacturing come to the rescue uh so mr shyansh did you get any idea uh, of how to revise so i don't think uh, it would be a hard one because all the additive manufacturing techniques that we had uh, seen throughout this course be it uh, powder based processes or extrusion processes or sheet lamination processes they are more or less building up on the same principle uh okay just it's the kind of material that is varying and your power source that is varying for example in powder bed you have a powder material and a laser source but in extrusion you have a plastic filament and a heater that will melt but the basic idea remains the same now how those techniques can be used to manufacture different kind of systems different kind of object that you need to focus and that you can very well well understand if you uh, try to relate them with uh, some actual problems from the company like some of these problems aerospace application or uh, dental application that we had seen today uh, all right okay uh, is there any uh, other question or shall we proceed uh, to the sample problems for this week so uh, you can ask uh, any doubt from uh, maybe previous weeks as well if you have since this is the last week and last interaction session for babeli any doubt from any of the week's content any additive manufacturing technique or the concept of rapid prototyping okay i assume then there is no questions from the previous week so uh, let us move on to some of the sample problems so achieving a high level of accuracy uh, with a lost Uh, wax casting is not easy true or false what do you think mr shriyansh mr vedant true uh, mr shriyansh what's your response true yes achieving a high level of accuracy with a uh, lost wax casting is not at all easy okay uh, so uh, you see lo uh, in lost wax casting there are a lot of problems of dimensional accuracy expansions contractions etc so to uh, a very high level of accuracy cannot be reached easily until and unless uh, you go on to remake uh, re repeat the process over and over again question 2 which of the following is the most accurate method to manufacture removable partial dentures we have just uh, seen the this in one of the case studies slow manufacturing uh, additive manufacturing uh, subtractive manufacturing or uh, none of these so i'll repeat the question 
Which of the following is the most accurate method to manufacture removable partial dentures? So, uh, Mr. Krishna Rajan, uh, what do you think should be the answer? You can type in the chat box. Mr. Shriyansh, uh, Mr. Vidan, please send in your responses as well. What do you think? Uh, we had just seen this in the case study. The most accurate method to manufacture uh, removable partial dentures. So Mr. Vedan says additive manufacturing. And Mr. Krishna Rajan also says additive manufacturing. Mr. Shansh, what's your take? Subtractive manufacturing. Okay, uh, so subtractive manufacturing is not the right answer, Mr. Shams. The correct answer is additive manufacturing. We had just now seen, uh, let me go back to that slide. Sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, this one. So in medical application, uh, this uh, case study was from uh, Pro's Lab Australia. They had replaced this lost wax casting process with this additive manufacturing process, metal additive manufacturing. Okay, so it is uh, not easy to manufacture uh, dentures with subtractive manufacturing. Earlier also, uh, there were castings used to develop these dentures. So additive manufacturing has come as a viable solution because you can develop a free from surfaces with ease using additive manufacturing. Freeform surfaces as in teeth geometry can be easily fabricated using additive manufacturing, okay, with the help of supports. Okay, moving on to third question. Technomatics is used after having the information of the production processes for the product. True or false? So, technomatics was that plant simulation software which helped us to simulate how a particular plant or factory would work. So, uh, it, uh, the question is, this particular software is used after having the information of the production, production processes for the product. True or false? Uh, what are your responses? Mr. Vedan, Mr. Shriyansh, uh, Mr. Krishnarajan? Mr. Vedan says true. Uh, what about others? True or false? Mr. Uh, Mr. Vedan, can you say the possible reason why it is true? Mr. Shriyansh also said it's true. Can any one of you say what is the possible reason? Why is it true? Uh, yes, Vedan, Mr. Vedan, what is the reason? Ma'am. Uh, yes, you are audible. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I think because after knowing the information of production processes, only we can lay out uh, lay out the plant plant uh, because yes. we have to see which process come after another, so we can lay out the plant accordingly. Yes, very well explained, Mr. Vedan. So, uh, only after we have the information, uh, what uh, processes, uh, pro manufacturing processes, a product needs to undergo, 
we then only we can lay out a plan a plant and uh, when uh, we have this particular information then only we go, can go to this particular software uh, to simulate our thing uh, mr shyanch is men mentioning because of part manufacturing yes so uh, uh, suppose uh, you know uh, you, you are having a product uh, say for example a cube with a hole drilled inside it so if you know that you are going to uh, develop this using milling or drilling then only you can uh, go to your software and uh, uh, actually place that type of uh, process in the line then only you can simulate so this is true so very well explained mr vidhan thanks so moving on to next question team soft center software akin to enterprise resource planning for an idea true or false okay so team center software is uh, basically a software that helps in uh, your post sale supports kind of function and enterprise resource planning is also a similar kind of a software uh, they uh, help you how you can go about uh, your management techniques how uh, you can uh, go about uh, to optimize your uh, service part of the company how you can uh, provide uh, support uh, to the customers that are currently using your product and uh, uh, in this sense these particular softwares help you to simulate these things so answer is uh, true both of these are true is there any doubt in this particular question any doubt mr vidhan mr shyanj uh, mr krishna rajan okay mr krishna rajan uh, do you have any doubt okay moving forward to question 5 uh, study of plant layout can only be carried out when a new factory has to be set up true or false so uh, what are your responses mr krishna rajan mr shyansh mr vidhan can you uh, study plant layout uh, even when uh, a new factory need not to be set up uh, yes mr vidhan uh, you are raising the hand you can say whatever you want ma'am i think uh, even after uh, the uh, any, any factory is set up if it is not functioning properly we should uh, take on the uh, plant layout of even after the uh, opening of that factory yes uh, yes you can study plant layout even after the factory has been set up or uh, when your factory has not been set up or you just want to see what if you set up a factory so uh, the answer is uh, false uh, yes uh, so the answer is false it is uh, not necessary that only when a new factory has to be set up then only you can study the plant layout as has been uh, mentioned uh, by mr vedan we can uh, study the plant layout if the factory is uh, not functioning well and you need to figure out where the actual problem arises okay so uh, you can uh, then uh, check your through the simulation and check your uh, plant layout studies to figure out where is the problem and then fix it uh, to uh, revamp your factory uh, mr shyanj you answered as true uh, is your doubt clear or shall i go on to explain more okay the doubt is cleared okay so the answer is false next is hospitals is an example of a product layout process layout fixed position layout or uh, none of these so uh, let me explain in hospitals you have a uh, different sections uh say for example you have mi room uh, in one section you have cardiology section separately uh, you have uh, maybe uh, saying uh, opds in a separate position so 
is it a product layout a process layout or fixed position layout or none of these so mr vedan says it's a fixed position layout uh, so mr shreyansh and mr krishna rajan uh, what are your responses Mr. Shyansh is also saying fixed position layout. Uh, Mr. Krishna Rajan. Okay, so uh, Mr. Vedant and Mr. Shyansh, uh, it is a uh, process layout. It is an example of process layout. okay so as i am telling you uh, in a hospital so say suppose this is a very basic sketch sorry okay what is that yeah okay so suppose this is your hospital so you have opds all in one section okay at one particular place then uh, you have all your uh, say pathology testing in one place say blood sample testing or any kind of testing uh, that you have blood testing urine testing uh, saliva testing any kind of pathology testing then uh, another is you have operation theaters in one place then uh, you have patient rooms in one section so can you find out similarity to a process layout kind of a system uh, so in process layout what is there you have milling process say in one place all the milling machines set up in one room all the drilling machines set up in another room all the grinding machines set up in another room all the lathe machines set up in another room so uh, in a hospital uh, the sections are divided based on different kind of operations or different kind of processes so it is an example of process layout so uh, is the answer clear okay okay uh, what about others um, okay uh, mr krishna rajan did you uh, understand okay so let's move forward uh, when we have automated process with a large sample size we can choose triangular distribution uh, normal distribution beta distribution or uh, none of these so uh, in the lecture if you might have noticed uh, this has been mentioned as normal distribution we can choose this as a, a normal uh, distribution because uh, the rest of the distributions they are for smaller sample sizes so in an automated process uh, when we have large data set we go for a uh, normal distribution in automated processes uh, so is the solution clear to all three of you uh, mr vedan mr shreyansh mr krishna rajan Mr. Vedant. Uh, which slide? Uh, sixth one. Uh, uh, which slide you are mentioning? Uh, for this question. Okay. For this question, uh, we do not uh, have uh, a kind of slide. Uh, this was just uh, mentioned in one single line uh, in the lecture not in today's lecture in the week's lecture uh, for automated process uh, with uh, large sample sizes so we have normal distribution uh, this can be defined in probably when we go on to here okay uh, in this uh, slide probably you are saying when we select processing time 
in automated processes here are different options that you get constant uniform normal log normal so these are uh, triangular that is one of the option and beta these are one of the op uh, the options that are in the options that are in question are normal triangle beta so uh, when particularly in case of uh, large data set we choose this normal option uh, in processing time you can get this uh, by right clicking uh, on the single process in this software this is uh, related to this software okay uh, is it clear mr vidhan Okay, so moving on to next question. Question A: While defining a parallel process in the simulation, a manager filled divisions as follows: x division is equals to five, and y division is equals to two. What is the number of machines at this parallel process? So, uh, what is the number of machines, um, Mr. Vedant and Mr. Krishna Rajan? 2 three, 10 or 25 uh, so x division means a number of machines yes a uh, number of uh, machines in the x direction and y division means number of machines in y direction okay so the total number of machines then becomes 5 into 2 which is 10 as correctly answered by uh, mr vida so in a parallel process as i uh, told you that uh, they are multiple machines for the same operation multiple machines for the same operation so like i told you this is your process 1 this is your process 2 this is a faster one this is a slower one so so that this do not have to wait we uh, put in multiple machines here okay so say suppose we place four machines so it's it this process will be speeded up by four times so this wouldn't have to wait more so now uh, when you define this in the software you have to give numbers as x division and y division so this basically makes a matrix so this is your x division and y division so suppose this is your process line so then you will have Uh, five machines along x and two along y making a total of 10 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so when you input they are input in uh, x cross y manner so is the question clear mr vidant and mr krishna rajan Uh, shall we move forward oh, okay mr vedan what about you is the solution clear okay so moving on to ninth question directly printing from a cad file reduces the number of in house remix due to error by dash 20% 45% 90% or 100% how many times that is uh, do you need to remix till uh, what should be the correct percent mr vedant and mr krishna rajan are there any errors uh, when we directly print from a cad file
uh, yes there are uh, eventually no errors so the uh, number of remakes are reduced by 100% the answer would be 100% see your uh, initially this is uh, this question was uh, relevant to that uh, case study uh, of uh, prose lab okay so therein it was mentioned uh, earlier when they used uh, lost wax castings they uh, used to have uh, they couldn't achieve accuracy as we had seen in the first question itself accuracy was not good so they had to remake their components because of errors then the product had to undergo remakes because of errors okay but when they switched to additive manufacturing their accuracy increased drastically or significantly and number of errors dropped to almost 0% so remakes were also almost zero they didn't have to uh, do any remake so this remake was reduced by 100% so from say x you go to zero what is the reduction 100% is the solution clear mr vedant and mr krishna rajan moving on to the last question we cannot uh, manufacture stainless steel parts by additive manufacturing true or false i assume this is easy uh, is it true or false mr krishna rajan and mr vedant Can we make stainless steel parts by additive manufacturing? Okay, Mr. Krishna Rajan says false. Okay, and Mr. Vedant? Mr. Krishna Rajan, your answer is correct. Uh, we can make stainless steel parts by additive manufacturing. We can make uh, stainless steel parts by additive manufacturing. One of the example is 316L stainless steel, which is extensively used in additive manufacturing. metal additive manufacturing rather okay so uh, 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 is the solution clear or uh, uh, this was the last question for today so uh, do you guys have any kind of doubts any kind of doubts from any of the week's content Mr. Vedan, Mr. Krishna Rajan, any doubts from today's class or any previous class? Okay. Mr. Vedan, do you have any doubt or any kind of questions? Okay. So, I think uh, Ma'am, the final exam will be uh, like problem solving session or like the quiz. Okay, so I do not have any idea about how the final exam will be. So it is in online mode, I suppose, computer based exam. So 
I do not have any idea so I cannot literally comment on that but I assume it will be like uh, so it won't be a numerical based one probably because there were no numericals in the course uh, but uh, I have no idea about that sorry Mr. Vedant is there any question any more question Uh, so, shall we wrap this session now? Uh, yes, Mr. Vedant. Uh, you can say. Ma'am, thank you for these problem solving sessions. These are very uh, helpful for the getting better insight of course because the course was very long and monotonous. And these uh, problem solving sessions are uh, much easier and helpful for learning that and understanding the course thank you ma'am thank you so much mr vedant uh, so it's just you guys who are working hard for this course so it's like an honor to me if i could make the things easier for you and you understood the things in a better manner so i'm really happy to know if uh, you got these in a better way thanks mr vedant for this lovely feedback Okay, so I think uh, we can wrap this up now. In case you have any questions still, uh, you can uh, reach out through mail. Uh, I'll post that in the chat box. Uh, you can reach out to me through this uh, mail anytime and I would love to answer your queries. You can note this down and uh, reach out any time uh, at any point okay so we'll end this session now thanks a lot everyone thanks a lot okay so all the best for your exam do well prepare well and uh, hope you enjoyed the course thanks a lot uh, i'll end this session now